Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we are back with our monthly sponsored video from Plex, and we've got it running right now on a Roku, and that is because it now supports live TV watching through uh, the DVR feature that we've covered a number of times in the past, but this time we're going to be looking at the lowest end Roku device, the $29 Roku Express, to see how this might work as a secondary TV viewing option if you're uh, building out your Plex-based cord cutting solution, and we're going to be taking a look at that in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is a paid sponsorship from Plex. However, nobody is reviewing this content before it is uploaded and all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's dig into this and see how this works. Now, if you haven't seen my Plex DVR overview video, I do suggest you check that out first because I detail how to set it up and how it works. Uh, in a nutshell, what happens is your Plex server connects up with a digital television tuner and can pull over the air content into your Plex server. Or if you have a cable based tuner like the HD Home Run Prime that I use, uh, you can connect it up with your cable service also. So uh, there are some limitations to that, which I'll talk about in that uh, DVR overview video. And in full disclosure, Silicon Dust, who makes the HD home run, is an occasional sponsor here on the channel. Now, when you load up your Roku now and you have a Plex Pass subscription and you've got that DVR configured, uh, you'll see a new option on your menu here for a program guide. Uh, so we're going to click on that real quick. And uh, what I'm presented with is everything that is on television right now. I can tune to, uh, for example, the Weather Channel here through my cable system and it will get up and running. It does take a little bit longer on this particular Roku to get up than I saw on uh, the Roku Streaming Stick Plus I tested the other day. And that's because this is $29 and kind of their entry level low-end device, but uh, the video looks great. I'm going to show you one thing that I think you should do to make the video look a little better in a second, but I've been very pleased with how the video looks for a low-cost device here, and uh, all seems to be functioning quite well. I also found that I did not have any interlacing issues, which is something we ran into with the uh, Amazon Fire TV stick that usually costs about $29 or so. It was not de-interlacing the video, but it looks like uh, the Roku stick here is doing that successfully. So you do get a little bit of art Artifacts when the video first comes up, but you're not going to see those interlacing lines that you might see on uh, the Amazon device. So for a low-cost tuner, uh, this does seem to be working pretty well, and uh, sometimes you will see a little more uh, compression artifacts depending on what you're using for your Plex server to encode. I do have a hardware encoder on my NAS device that sometimes muddies up the uh, image here a little bit. Part of the problem, too, is that my cable provider, Comcast, uh, really compresses the heck out of everything before they even send it over to me in the first place. So I'm de dealing with a lot of uh, issues with artifacts occasionally on here, but uh, your mileage might vary. And if you're using an over-the-air antenna, you're going to get a much better signal coming in. So I think you'll see less artifacts than you just saw uh, with that video there. But one thing I do suggest you do is that you go up to the top of the menu here and you go over to the settings, which you'll find under your username. And in there, there's going to be some options for video. And what I've done is I've moved the local quality from its default of 12 megabits per second uh, to 20 megabits per second. It was working just fine even on this low-end Roku, and I suggest you go in that direction just because it does improve the video quality a little bit, and you'll see uh, less artifacts in the process there. Now, compared to some of the other platforms that support the Plex DVR, uh, the Roku is a little more limited with the live TV in that you can't set up recordings from it. You have to do it from your phone or from other platforms that do support uh, that DVR function, but you do get time shifting while you're watching live television. So I've got uh, the Weather Channel here paused on a commercial. I can hit play now and it will start playing back. And then if I go up here with the remote here, you can see that I just selected this little uh, bar here. I can then fast forward uh, further along here in the broadcast and then hit play. Now this will go away after I uh, change the channel, but I can now again pause it and maybe rewind a little bit too to where I was before. So I can go back here and uh, go over to play and go from there. So we'll do some of the live time shifting, but again, you're limited on DVR features. Uh, but once your DVR is done recording a show in its entirety, uh, that will of course show up in your Plex library and you can play it back uh, on the Roku here like you would any other Plex recording. Now, another cool thing you can do with the Roku Express is hook it up to an old CRT TV like my dusty old one here. And I've got live TV coming in from my Plex server right now. This is an HD broadcast, of course, getting uh, significantly downsampled for the uh, TV here, but it seems to work pretty well. Uh, you do need the Express Plus version of their low-end device. This costs $39 versus $29, uh, but the differentiator here with the Plus is that it has composite output. So if you've got an old TV out in your garage or something, 
uh, you can hook this up to that and get your full Plex server. The live TV, of course, works here, uh, but you can also back out here and uh, navigate through other stuff as well. So I can go into my DVR recordings, for example, and play back something that uh, was recorded earlier on my DVR. So I can hit play here and uh, play back something from Plex. As you can see, Plex is working just like it does on a larger television here. Uh, it does take a second for it to spin up again on this lower end device, but uh, once it's up and running, you can start watching your recordings on this too, and it seems to be working pretty nicely. So that's going to do it for Roku and live TV on Plex. It seems to be working quite nicely even on a CRT television. Uh, do keep your suggestions coming in for future Plex topics. I'm always looking for new things to talk about with this because it is a part of my cord cutting solution, and I am going to be working on a video soon with a kind of a synopsis of how I have everything configured right now because at the moment I was looking on my uh, time timeline here. We have about uh, probably about two or three hours worth of content on this most recent project and I want to get something a little more concise. So I'll detail exactly what I've got hooked up from hardware to software and everything in between. Uh, that video will be coming up soon. And if you have questions for that video, uh, please also leave them down in the comment section. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.